This video will describe a basic overview of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, or USACE, authorities for the establishment and operations of a USACE Emergency Operations Center, or EOC. We'll discuss the facilities and support requirements needed during the preparedness, emergency response and recovery phases, and the organizational mission and functions of an EOC. Finally, we'll describe the roles and responsibilities of the command staff, general staff, and the EOC support personnel when the EOC is activated. So what exactly is an EOC? By definition, an EOC is the physical location at which the coordination of information and resources to support incident management activities normally takes place. During an incident or event, the district EOC supports the state and local governments by providing a single point of coordination for USACE response activities. The district EOC, in some events, may also host a recovery field office, or RFO, if mission assigned. This will depend on the geographical location of the impacted area, relative to the location of the FEMA Joint Field Office, or JFO, and District Headquarters. EOCs may be staffed by personnel from the impacted district, as well as personnel from other districts. These personnel may be members of Mission Planning and Response Teams, or PRTs, or members of other communities of practice. The EOC is a dedicated facility within the division or district headquarters and is maintained by the Readiness and Contingency Operations Office or Emergency Management Office. The ability to establish an emergency operations center at USACE divisions and districts has long been a requirement of Engineer Regulation ER 500-1-1 and Engineer Pamphlet EP 500-1-1. An EOC is established to provide USACE commanders and their staff a facility that enables command, control, communications, and information sharing for the commander's response during natural disasters, national emergencies, and contingency operations. The two most common reasons to activate and operate the EOC are 1. To conduct flood fight and recovery operations under the USACE authority provided in Public Law 8499 or 2. To respond to an event that affects USACE owned and operated projects, vessels, or USACE designed and built flood risk management FRM, and coastal storm risk management CSRM, projects. A third reason to activate a USACE EOC is when the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, issues a mission assignment to USACE as part of our Emergency Support Function 3, or ESF-3 requirement under the Stafford Act and National Response Framework. In response to ESF-3 mission assignments, the EOC serves as the commander's focal point for the collection of essential elements of information, conducting mission analysis, providing situational assessments, and disseminating all information regarding the USACE support to the event. In rare instances, the EOC may also have to activate to coordinate activities in support of the Department of Defense or DOD operations and or missions overseas, or under other agency authorities like, for example, the Oil and Hazardous Chemical Plan. USACE will follow operational phases as prescribed by incident-specific federal interagency concept of operations plans, HQ USACE All Hazards O Plan, and Division All Hazard Operations Plans. This is the concept of operations during activation of the EOC for both notice and no-notice events. There are six USACE operational phases, from steady state through closeout. The EOC will activate to the level necessary to respond to the request for support from states, missions, and tasking from FEMA and the USACE Operations Center as required. The commander or designee, such as the Deputy Commander, Division Chief of Readiness and Contingency Operations, or District Emergency Manager, may change the level of operation of the EOC and direct subordinate elements to modify their level of operation. 
The levels of activation shown here are compatible with the activation levels and terminology used by FEMA headquarters, the FEMA regions, and most states. When activated for an emergency response, the EOC will collect Essential Elements of Information, or EEI, perform mission analysis, provide situational assessments, coordinate resources, disseminate operational directives, prepare reports, and provide the commander with a single source for all operational information needed to manage the event. The EOC will contain, at a minimum, the components and positions shown here. These positions will typically be filled by the impacted or supported division and or district to establish and maintain command and control and unity of command. However, the positions can also be filled by the Contingency Support Cadre or CSC if requested, or members from other functional cadres and or support operations such as the USACE Logistics Activity and ACIT. USACE EOCs use a scalable, modular organizational structure to adapt to both the magnitude and complexity of the situation and incorporate National Incident Management System, or NIMS, principles regarding span of control. This is accomplished by using proven standards like the Incident Command System, or ICS, to achieve a proactive system and approach that ensures standardization across the enterprise. The operations section is responsible for the management and execution of all response and recovery missions and oversees recovery operations at the recovery field office if an RFO is mission assigned and established. The operations section supports the development and maintenance of the command's common operating picture and situational awareness and assists in formulating strategic communications with higher HQ and other federal agencies and states regarding the execution of assigned missions. The main branches activated under the operations section include response missions, recovery missions, and the liaison branch. The Response Missions Branch conducts mission analysis and coordinates resource requirements with or for the supported district. This includes anticipating and tracking all FEMA response missions, as well as PL-8499 flood fight missions. In addition to coordinating assigned missions, the Response Missions Branch may be staffed with subject matter experts or SMEs from various communities of practice, including water management, engineering, operations and regulatory, navigation, hydropower, real estate and contracting. The Response Missions Branch also provides coordination on the assignment and deployment of Preliminary Damage Assessment, or PDA teams, and Coastal PDA teams. The Coastal PDA teams conduct early assessment of sustained damages to USACE Coastal Beach projects to provide a rough order of magnitude, or ROM, of damage, and whether further investigation is required. The Response Missions Branch provides recommendations and guidance regarding the potential requirement and establishment of a recovery field office. The MSC can provide advice and regional support in the form of personnel to the impacted or supported district as the recovery field office is established. The Recovery Mission Execution Branch will conduct a mission analysis to scope the size and complexity of potential recovery missions that may be mission assigned from FEMA. The Recovery Mission Branch will coordinate resource requirements with HQ USACE, the supported MSC and or the supported district. This includes anticipating and tracking all FEMA recovery missions. Planning and Response Team, or PRT, mission managers may be assigned to the Recovery Mission Branch at the district level prior to the establishment of a recovery field office. The Liaison, or LNO, branch provides support and coordination for the selection and deployment of PL-8499 local government liaisons, known as LGLs, as the event requires. PL-84-99 LNOs are funded by the Category 200 Class 210 Response Operations Funds obtained via the MSC from HQ USACE. The PL-84-99 LNO serves on the USACE District Team and provides assistance to states' EOCs in response and recovery missions. 
This position serves as the communications conduit between the state government and the district EOC, or sometimes other USACE elements which are executing missions, ensuring parties understand the other's issues, priorities, and concerns. The local government liaison cadre is managed from HQ USACE. Its purpose is to coordinate with local governments on mission scoping, assignments, and significant issues to ensure the locals understand USACE roles during federal response and recovery. Members of the cadre are deployed in response to a mission assignment from FEMA and serve as a conduit between counties, boroughs, parishes or cities, and the district EOC and or recovery field office. The planning section has responsibility for maintaining resource status, briefings and situation displays, situation reports or SITREPs, and information collection plans. The planning section is also responsible for the demobilization and transition plans and after-action report, if required. At a minimum, the planning section will consist of current operations, or COOPS, and future operations, or FUOPS. During EOC activations, the COOPS is responsible for current operations planning that occur within the operational period, usually one day. Additional responsibilities include providing situational awareness, initiating alert notifications, collecting and disseminating critical information, and conducting crisis action planning. COOPS keeps the commander and staff informed throughout the event by providing a common operating picture and supports the crisis management team during contingencies. The COOPS will also be responsible for establishing and maintaining the battle rhythm for the event and conduct commander's briefings or CUBS and shift change briefings for level 1 or 24-7 operations. The Future Operations Branch or FUOPS is responsible for the planning and coordination of all WARNORDS, OPORDS and FRAGORDS required during the planning, response and recovery phases of an event. This includes the coordination with the supported district or districts in the development of a demobilization and or mission transition plan for post-event closeout. The FUOPS is also responsible for the After Action Report or AAR for the event. This includes solicitation of lessons observed and issues collection and coordination with the Corps of Engineers Remedial Action Program or CRAP lead if a formal AAR is required. Most logistics support to emergency management and contingency operations will be from the Logistics Planning and Operations Division or LPOD. The LPOD provides USACE with an organic logistics planning and execution capability to support the full spectrum of USACE missions and serves as the DOL ULA Operations Division. The LPOD is comprised of eight personnel, including the Logistics Division Chief, located at the Logistics Activity Center, or LAC, in Millington, Tennessee. The LPOD is supported by eight Regional Logistics Planners, or RLPs, stationed at each division. Requests for logistics support should be directed to the USACE Logistics Activity, or ULA, through the USACE Operations Center. The Regional Logistics Liaison is available to assist in developing these requirements and submitting the request for support. The Directorate of Corporate Information, or CECI, and the Army Corps of Engineers Information Technology, or ACIT, will provide information management, information technology, and communication support to supported and supporting divisions, either at existing core locations or affected disaster locations. CECI and ACIT will also assist in the selection and establishment of facilities to be used as recovery field offices or other alternate locations. Support for event-specific requirements will be through the Enterprise Emergency Response Team or EERT. The Finance Administration section is responsible for the financial management, monitoring and tracking of all costs relating to the operation of the RFO, any assigned FEMA missions, and PL84-99 missions. This section also includes contracting, human resources, and other administrative support functions. This concludes the EOC 101 Overview. 